will probably agree with this one. If we're going to don't count, <laughs> we're going to be able to uh, use military force against an Al Qaeda cell in Yemen. And the Yemeni government says we can't tell our people that you do it in the United States. We're going to say we're going to do it. So we may need to have that conversation privately if WikiLeaks is going to put it all over the world. Maybe next time the Yemeni government won't be so willing to let us take out the terrorists inside Yemen. Well, how does that sound? Yeah, we, 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 we lose the moments altogether. Uh, on the right, don't we just go back to like war, 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 war? Some of the diplomats are, they're, they're bumpers between the two boats of war. Well, actually, sometimes they get too complicated. It's a little complicated. It's a little complicated. But, you know, sometimes the moments of the war go very well together. Sometimes they're building a coalition of countries to help the military force. For example, with Afghanistan and the build up to were there, we went around the world, the State Department, uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell, and got other countries to agree with us to use force. Allow? So some Allow, right? Allow us to enforce it. Allow the coalition of the will. Sometimes the policy and force go together as well. Thank you so much for joining me. James Rubin, Assistant Secretary of State under the Clinton administration. We'll be right back.